there are a couple of working environments that you can use to work on your database. I'm going to start off here by showing you DB Browser, and then later I will show you Visual Studio. Now, as you can see here, I have a few windows open. One of them is DB Browser. The other one is a folder on my desktop and a folder called Education. And then below it, I have simply a terminal window. Now I'm going to be creating a database file. And as we mentioned in class, this is simply an empty file. And I'm going to go ahead and do so within that education folder. I'm going to go ahead and move here from desktop to education. And now that I'm in it, I'm simply listing my files. And as you can see there, as we see above, there are no files. Now I'm going to go ahead and create that empty file. And so I'm going to go ahead and call it education.db. And now you can see it above you there in the GUI, the graphical user interface. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open that database. And as you can see there, I am in the folder and I'm going to select that file and I'm going to go ahead and open. Now the very next thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to place some content that is going to create the tables in some of the data, just like we did in class. Now I'm going to go ahead and paste all of that in. I have pretty big font. So as you can see here, I have my table of colleges followed by that of students. And then I am populating each of those tables with the data that you see there before you. And so now I'm going to go ahead and run this. I'm going to go ahead and execute all. And as you can see there, that was created. We can see the tables here in the DB schema. If we were to move over to browse data, we would be able to look at each of those tables. Now, if you look over into the folder, you can see there that you have something of a temporary file. And this is where the program is remembering our actions. However, at this point, it's good to go ahead and write our changes to make sure if the program crashes, we don't lose what we have done. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And as you can see there, that has persisted to the database and we no longer have that file. Now that will appear as we work, but every time we write, we write, it will persist all of our work. Okay. So let's go back to our SQL console. And at this point you could start to create new files and each of those files you could store and you could do them by query or you could group a few of them. So I'm going to go ahead here and create a new file. Now, before I do that, let's go ahead and save this one. So in case we want to rerun it later on, we have it available. So I'm going to go ahead and call it education.sql. And as you can see there, that now appears in our folder. Once again, if I list my files here at the command line, we can see them. So at this point, we could go ahead and close them and open up a new one. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And as you can see there, we have a new file. So we're going to start off here by entering a very simple query. I'm simply going to list the colleges that are in the city of Cambridge. And so we can go ahead and run it. And as you can see there below, we get our output. You can resize this windows as you need them. So once again, at this point, we could go ahead and save those files if we were trying to create independent files for every single query. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to say here, uh, Cambridge colleges. And so once again, we have that extra query within our environment. Now, a few additional things you might want to do is you might want to enter some comments. You can do that by entering dash dash and the keyboard will take the shortcut of command forward slash and you can look it up what the equivalent is on Windows that would be here for Mac. Here is where you would write your comments. And the other thing that you can do as well is that you can select your statement and comment it all out as a block, as you have seen that I have done there. So if you wanted to try a few different blocks, you can comment and uncomment pretty easily. Now, the only last thing that I would go ahead and, and show you here, let me go ahead and uncomment this block, 
is the command to be able to run. And if you mouse over, you can see here what the different options are. You can, they might be different if you are on a different operating system. But for us here, we can simply do command return. And so when you're going through, and you can see there that we got the same results, but when you're on a pretty fast, tight loop and you're experimenting, all of these little things can help you move that much faster. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to how we could do some of this within Visual Studio Code as well. Now, as you can see there, I have Visual Studio Code opened. I'm gonna go ahead and delete what we have. And if we list our files below, you can see that everything is gone. I'm gonna go ahead and create that database again. So I will enter education.db and we see the file there above us. Now I'm gonna go ahead and drag that folder onto Visual Studio Code. And as you can see there, we get one file, an empty file of education.db. Now in order to work with SQLite, you need a plugin, you need an extension. And so we can move over to extensions and I'm gonna go ahead and write SQLite. And as you can see there, there is a plugin that we can use an extension that has you know, over a million uh, downloads and it's okay. It's not fantastic, but it can allow you to work with your database within the VS Code environment. So I've gone ahead and installed it as you can see here already. So let's go ahead and move to our working environment and see what we can do with it. So I'm gonna start off by adding a file. In this case, I'm gonna add the file of education.sql and this will be my file where I create my database and populate, not create my database, but create my tables and populate those tables, the one we ran before. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and select it all and you can then, uh, well, actually before we do that, we need to connect to the database. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this and I'm gonna go ahead and enter the palette. I'm gonna go ahead and enter here SQL. And one of those will allow me to open database. And so we're gonna go ahead and connect to that education.db. And as you can see there, that is being suggested for us, education, education.db. And so I've gone ahead and connected to it now. Now let's go ahead and open up education.sql once again. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I can actually just simply right click and run. And you can see there that I have a shortcut as well. This is a modified shortcut. Uh, the one that <laughs> came out of the box didn't work for my environment. So it gives you an opportunity to edit. Actually, let me go ahead and show you that. If I do SQL open database, let me go ahead and show filter for those. You can see here that run query allows you to modify your key binding. And so I've gone ahead and done that. So I'm gonna go ahead now and simply select and I'm gonna go ahead and run that query. Now at times it'll ask you again for the database that you're running against, but in this case you can see there that it comes back with four blocks. There's no output for what we have done, but it simply indicates that it ran all of those blocks against the database. So let's go ahead and confirm that. I'm gonna go ahead and close this and close this other one. Now I'm gonna go ahead here and create a new file. I'll call it Cambridge Colleges.sql. And now I'm going to go ahead and enter the same thing I entered before. Now I will select, well, let me go ahead and save, right click and run the query. It'll ask me about my database again, and you can see there that we're getting the output once again. So different ways of interacting with the same database, we can do so through Visual Studio, and you can build your files one at a time. You can use this plugin to be able to interact with the database, or you can do it from DB browser. But here are a couple of options. I will leave it up to you which one you prefer to work in.